In today's video, we're going to learn and perfect the G grace note burl. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. I also teach Skype and online bagpipe lessons, but more on that later. Here we go again, everybody. One more video on the burl, this time the G grace note burl. This is a particular variety of burl that starts with a G grace note. And for those that don't know, the burl is a sequence of motions with your pinky to make multiple low A's occur on your chanter, be it practice chanter, pipe chanter, what have you. I have previously made a video on checking your flexibility to see which style of burl you should use. There's a video right up here if you want to see the whole thing, but briefly, and a test you can do right now, take your right hand, palm up, grab your pointer, middle, and ring finger, and see how easily or not you can curl that pinky. A lot of folks can curl that pinky easily into their hand. If you can, the style of burl you're going to want to at least attempt first is the seven style. If you're like me, however, and you have very little flexibility or there's any sort of clicking, popping, or just unpleasantness in that curling motion when you attempt that, don't try it, don't do it. There's another one called the up-down burl, and that's the one you're going to be using. In the description below, there's links to the PDF documents we have here. One, the seven style, and the other, the up-down style. You're welcome to try to tackle either or pick which one from that test we just did that fits your particular pinky Download it, put it on a tablet, print it out, have it in front of you so you can follow along. For the basic seven style, what you're going to do is start with your pinky above that hole, sweep it down past very lightly. We're not pressing down with any real force, just breaking up the airflow. And then we're going to curl it up and back. I can do a few of these before I hurt myself. And it should come out something like... The other way I teach folks how to do it is the up-down style. In this case, we're going to start with our finger below... Sweep up and across, but leave the finger on the channer, then sweep down, back, and off. Again, I'm not pressing with any real force. If it feels like a pothole under your fingers, ka -dunk, ka -dunk, you're pressing down too hard. It's almost like the finger's hovering over the hole. So those are the basic burl, and there's a video right up there and again in the description below with further exercises on perfecting your basic burl. But today we're going to add one more wrinkle to this thing, and that's a G grace note at the top of the burl to make it more of a da-da-da, where we're going to hear three clear, distinct sounds on the burl each time. But briefly, we're going to start each of these motions now with a G grace note before doing whichever style of burl you're going to do. So for the seven, it will be a G grace note, a downward sweep, and a curl up and back. And for the up down, it's going to be a G grace note, a sweep up, and then a sweep down. But that's enough talking about this. Let's get to the document now and see what all we have going on here. Starting with the seven style, as more folks use this particular style of burl, what we're going to do is start with a G grace note on the A, and then a downward sweep, and a downward sweep. Hmm? That's not how we're going to do it when it gets to full speed, but I first want to isolate the sweeping motions into their two separate components. In the next line, we're going to do a G grace note to an A as well, and then do just the curl back, and just the curl back twice before finally in line three, putting it all together where we'll do the full motion of a down sweep and a curl back. And we want to make sure that these are even. Bum, bum, bum. I did that without a metronome. Let's try it again with a metronome to make sure we can get the G grace note and each of these Swipes across low G, all landing on the click of a metronome to make sure we keep it good, clean, and even. As you can hear, the G grace note and each of the low G motions is crisply on the sound of the metronome. If it's done correctly, it shouldn't be before or after. And we're holding that last note for now for two full beats. Bum, 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 bum. Now let's try that with line two. This will be the curling back motion. Bum. 
Do each of these lines as many times as you need until you can reliably get that individual motion, the downward sweep and the curling back, clean, accurate, and repeatable. If one motion is more difficult than another, keep working on it. Though, again, if you feel any sort of strain, especially in that curling back motion, consider doing the up-down burl, which we're going to be going over in just a moment. But assuming all of that was going well, we're going to turn the metronome back on and try line three. So in line three, we're going to do the actual motion now, which is going to be a G grace note, a downward sweep, and a curl back. And we'll do that twice at a slow speed. But you can see in bar three, we're going to speed it up. We're going to go from beat, beat, two beats to half a beat half a beat and one beat. So it's twice as quick and it's going to start sounding a lot more like the ornament itself. If the fast ones are not perfect, that's okay as long as the three times we're doing it slowly are. I want to start speeding it up because we need to build our dexterity but not at the cost of our accuracy. So if in playing it quickly it's a little messy, obviously work on cleaning it up but make sure the three slow ones are good and clean. If they're not, slow the metronome down until they are. So that's the G grace note burl using the seven style of embellishment. Now let's try this with the up down burl. For the up down burl, we are going to start again with a G grace note on the initial A. And then here we're going to sweep up twice. Again, it's not because that's how we'll do it when we play the full ornament, but I want to break down each motion such that we can practice it, make sure that it's repeatable on an individual scale. So G grace note and two upward sweeps. Let's go ahead, turn this metronome on, try line one of the up down style. Then line two, we're going to do downward sweeps. To note, this is the same thing we did to start the seven style. So I've already done this once today, but I'll go ahead and do it again. And then line three, where we're going to do it twice slowly, twice quickly, one more time slowly, same idea that we did with the seven, obviously now just with the up down style, G grace no burl. Now as we move forward and we start tackling this embellishment from various notes of the scale, to note, I am going to be playing the up-down burl from here on out. That's not to say that's what you should be doing. Do the burl that's working best for you. But we'll be talking about how to do it from, well, each of these notes. To start with, we're going to be on low A. This one's pretty basic. We're going to do a G grace note on an A, hold it for a beat, and then we will do a nice open burl, this time half, half, and two. Bum, 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 A, 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 A before we actually try to play it at full speed. One of the things to note, the G grace note burl is a big embellishment. It takes a lot of time. There's not gonna be a ton of low A left after you play it. This poster behind me, which will be available for sale, and when it is, there'll be a link below and a link up here to the video for it. It actually goes in and shows you the timing of this and shows exactly how little A there is left after, but that's for a future video. In any case, that first A here in measure three is going to be the full beat, and then the next beat is going to be the two short A's and whatever remains going to the third A. So it won't feel nearly as long as the one we start with. And as with line three, I want to make sure that the slower examples, bars one, two, and four, are perfect and clean and clear. If the full speed G grace and pearls are a little bit blurry, work on cleaning them up. But again, this is to start building your dexterity into the motion. If you do three out of five perfectly, the other two, well, if they're not exactly perfect, it's okay as long as we're starting to build up the speed because there are, well, just relatively quick things we have to do in piping. But make sure it's not so fast that you don't hear those A's. The burl is all about the A's. The pinky and those low G's are just there to separate the A. If it's and not da-da-da, you're going too fast. 
Anyways, enough talking. One of the things that's great about this G grace note burl is the G grace note motion to that initial A of the embellishment kind of resets the whole thing. So the only thing you have to do to figure out the rest of these from low G up to F is make sure that you can go from that note cleanly with a G grace note to the note you're going to. So in this case, it's low G, G grace note to A, so pinky and top pointer together with the top pointer immediately coming down to sound that G grace note. And then when you do that, you'll follow it by the two sweeps. Oh, chum, bum, bum. Oh, chup, bum, bum. Again, bars one, two, and four should be good, clean, and perfect. And if bar three is just a little bit on the blurry side, work on getting it clean, but it's okay. It's about building the dexterity, at least in these early days. Yes, even my chanter squeaks sometimes. Let's try that again. The next one's from B, so B, one finger up, two fingers down to that A, and then whatever burl motion you're doing from B. From C, so C, pinky and pointer up, down to an A, so pointer down, middle, ring down, and then again, whichever burl you're doing. From C. From D, you're on D. Pointer and pinky, yes, the whole bottom hand will be off for just a split second before you close down to that A, and again, do a burl. Let's do it. On to page two, all right, from E. This one, pretty simple because the bottom hand isn't gonna move in this case. E, one up, two down, burl. So E, pointer up, pointer and ring finger down into the burl. Let's do it. F down to a G grace note burl. This time, pointer comes up, so only the thumb will be covering for a split second. Down to the A, again, the bottom hand's already in an A position, and then the burl of your choosing. From F. And then extra credit, the A grace note burl from high G. So when you're on high G, if you're going to put an emphasizing grace note in your ornament, it can no longer be a G grace note because it's not available anymore. You're on G. But we can play an A grace note. The thumb can come off very briskly, very briefly, head down to the A, and then you're still doing your burl. And then as we're heading back up to the high G in this case, we'll do another A grace note up. That's the whole ah, hand off, thumb down. It's a little bit tricky, but I'm sure you can get it. And if not, there's a link below to a video on high A grace notes so you can sort those out. There you go, everybody, the G grace note burl. I've heard them called big burls. I've heard them called super burls. I don't know of one clear name. G grace note burl is a bit of a mouthful, but hey, that's what I've heard it called the most um, often. So that's what I went with in this video. It's a great ornament. It's super cool. It's one of the most bagpipey things you can do right up there with the heavy D throw and the grip. 
So take some time, perfect this. It shows up a lot, especially in more modern reels and hornpipes. So yeah, get a good, crisp, G-Grace note burl. Yeah, your piping will thank you. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also have a Patreon and a special shout out to Mr. Michael Dingus, my number one supporter. But you'll see names now of folks scrolling up. These are folks that support the channel monthly. I'd love to add your name to this list. You often get early access to videos and other perks, so please check out the Patreon. It helps more than you know. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet, and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, like this fine hoodie I have here. But there's also the prescription bagpipe line, like this mug here, if you want to give everyone a good little laugh about um, how many bagpipes your spouse will allow uh, by prescription. But in any case, check it out. There's t-shirts and hats and all sorts of other things, so let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers.